This is One on One. Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. For the first time and not for the last, we have here on the set of One on One, Joe Barardo, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of an organization called MagnaCare. Yes, sir. Good to see you. What is MagnaCare? Uh, MagnaCare is a health plan uh, statewide, New York and New Jersey. Uh, we serve, uh, we just broke a million members actually uh, this past January. How hard is that? Uh, it took the company's 24 years old, so it's taken all the 24 years to, to get that big. Um, and we operate uh, basically in the middle market, so we serve employers that tend to be, you know, maybe 25 employees and, mm -hmm. and larger. Um, although we have a couple of uh, partners on the exchange, so we've, we've actually branched into the individuals and, and small group. It's interesting. By the way, you just told me before we got on the air that you're partners with one of our partners. Make-A-Wish yeah. Foundation. I am. I will go back to MagnaCare in a second, but tell me that, because we have Tom Weatherall who's actually coming in, oh. who's the executive director. He's actually coming in, right, with um, uh, tomorrow's coming in. We're taping with one of the Make-A-Wish kids who are fabulous. How did yeah. you get hooked up with them? I promise we'll do MagnaCare, but how did you get hooked up a with them? Actually, through Tom. So Tom, Tom, <laughs> Tom and I met socially. It's funny how New Jersey has it, like eight people it, who it really are friends is. with each other. Go ahead. So, so Tom and I met through, through some friends in Monmouth County. So I uh, spent about three years just supporting various events and... About three years ago, I got asked to participate on the board, and uh, so I served on the board of directors. And actually, in September, I took over as chairman of the board. Uh, we're working with Tom. What do regularly. you love about them? You know, I, it's funny. I'm, I'm glad you asked that because while I love the fact that we do wonderful ki things for kids, I, I do it for the parents. I, I couldn't imagine. I have four healthy children. I couldn't imagine what I can't imagine what these parents go through as they face you know these illnesses and these challenges with their children. So. You know, while you watch the reaction of a child, you know, going to the Super Bowl or going to Disney World. By the way, sorry, Joe, we should take, make it clear. Make-A-Wish grants wishes to children who are dealing with some pretty serious yeah, illnesses. Yeah, life-threatening illness. I'm sorry, I don't want to assume people know that, so God, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's a life-threatening illness uh, facing a child. And, um, you know, what, what I love about it is that you see the, the, the amazement of the child, but when you see the relief of the parent and the happiness of the parent because their, their child just smiled for the first time, you know, in a year. Mm. It's uh, it's really really rewarding. It's good stuff. The uh, <clears throat> healthcare. I'm sorry. Gotta That's go back. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Healthcare environment, post implementation of Obamacare, ACA, mm -hmm. the uh, Affordable Care Act. Question. How challenging is this the envir environment? Not just for an organization like yours, but more importantly for consumers. Well, you know, it's, it's completely confusing. Um, it's, it's really, it's very disruptive on all accounts, whether you're a consumer, whether you're somebody like me running a company that serves businesses, whether you're a provider. And I know you've, you've got all those constituents that, that either participate in the show or watch. Sure. Um, you know, on the consumer side of it, I think what's really frustrating is they don't exactly know where to go, what, what plan they should choose, you know, what are the rules, I also feel like going into January 1st because of the news, everybody felt rushed that they had to make a decision by January 1st when they really had till the end of March to make decisions as individuals and, uh, and those, well, the small group exchanges is, is, is postponing year. But I, I think the, what I tell everybody is sit back, ask questions, go to the websites, meet with the navigators, Try to understand what your family used in the last few years as far as healthcare goes, and then make decisions. Mm. Um, if you're an employer, again, um, you know most of the things that that can impact you from a from a fine or a regulatory perspective have been pushed off a year. So you know, take this time to make sure you really understand. You know, what are you required to do? Um, you know, things like that are. If you're an employer of 50 employees or more, you, you have to uh, offer sure. insurance. Uh, so people are saying, you know, should I should I fire somebody and be 49 employees? Should I not hire the 50th employee? And if I go with the 50, does that mean I don't give bonuses or do I not give raises? Do I not expand? Exactly. Tough well, choices. It's really tough choices. Here's what I would say: run your business. You know, run your business to run your business. Um, I think a lot of this is math. You know, if you're a business owner and you have low-paid workers who could benefit from subsidies, you're probably going to do them a favor if you sit down and really evaluate what you're offering and who your employee base is, mm. because some of them can really benefit by going to the exchange. Now others, at the same time, you know, may not. So they're, they're gonna be reliant on employer-based coverage. So I really think that there's no one size fits all in this at all. People really need to understand their, their current situation. Let me do this. <clears throat> if you were in charge and you were making these decisions, 
pre-implementation of Obamacare? You mean like I pretend I do when I walk around my house? Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone listen? I, I think, no, no. <laughs> what would you have done? I think it would have been as simple as expanding Medicaid and expanding Medicare. Explain that to folks who aren't experts on the policy side. You would say it again? I would have, I would have expanded Medicaid by basically, we, we're doing some of that in the law by right. expanding the, the income of level. We're doing some of it. So expand the income level that makes people eligible. So you can make a little bit more money and yeah, be eligible. And still be Medicaid. eligible. Still be eligible. Medi Medicare, I would have brought the age down. So rather than, rather than have a system where we just created all this complexity and all this bureaucracy and all this disruption, bring the Medicare age down, I don't know, let's call it 55, and let people buy in. And what is it now? It's 60, 65 or 67. Bring it down, you say. Bring it down. Bring it down. How would that have helped, Joe? Well, let me, what's interesting about all this is the government programs dictate pricing. If you participate in Medicare or Medicaid as a provider, as a doctor Medicare or hospital, for folks who are older, right. Medicaid for those who are financially in need. Yes. If you participate as a, as a doctor in a hospital in those programs, the government dictates the pricing. So there's a Medicare rate. You, you've heard this, you know, there's sure, always these. The reimbursement. Reimbursement to the providers. And same thing in Medica Medicaid. It's, it's basically a state slash sure. uh, federal program in Medicaid, and it's a federal program in Medicare. So right away, you have the federal government saying, this is what the reimbursement levels are going to be, which in many ways are more cost effective than what the commercial marketplace is, almost always, really. So now you would have been basing a health plan off the most cost effective reimbursements in the marketplace, which clearly would have had impact on the cost. And then secondarily, you've heard a lot about accountable qu uh, care organizations, ACOs, ACOs um, all the integration of care. That's happening mostly in the Medicare environment right now, the government pays. With older, with older people. Caring for older patients. Right, so if you're, gonna, if you're gonna implement those efficiencies and you're gonna invest the dollars in that, I would have just had it reach down further into the population. Mm. Um, I, I gotta ask you something. Say someone was trying to follow what you were saying, as I was and as our audience is, and they said, you know what? Some of it makes sense, but I'm confused a bit. Can you understand folks being confused, A, and B, how the heck are we going to better educate folks so they can get a better grasp on this, Joe, so that they can make the best decisions for themselves and their families? You it's know, confusing. It's completely confusing. Steve, that's the challenge, and the, and the challenge is I don't know that it's going to take, I, I think it's going to take rather five years or so for this to really, really settle down. Um, you know, you have a lot of new entrants to the marketplace. You know, in New Jersey here, we have a, a co-op, Health, sure. Health Republic. Yeah, they you just jumped some, in. Yep, you got some major Full players. Full disclosure, they just jumped in as an underwriter of ours to do health education. I just want to make that clear. Once oh, you great. said that, I Terrific. felt the need to say that. You know, great, great initiative. Um, you know, not-for-profit health care. I think in the state, you also have Horizon and AmeriHealth right. participating in the exchanges. You know, both good companies. But you know, I think that the challenge that we have is that we're talking about introducing new products, right? So there's narrower networks, there's subsets sure. of networks being offered to people. I don't think people really understand that completely, They're confused. right? And also, you don't know whether you're going to get a subsidy or not. You know, am I eligible, and should I join because it's going to be paid for by the government or 80 percent by the government? So I think it's going to take you know at least this next year for people to understand some of the mistakes they might have made by, might have made by joining or not joining. Um, and then it's going to take you know, two, three years beyond that for the, for the system Final to settle question, down. the role of the media in all this? You know, it, it's sound bites. It's disappointing. The no, media. no, but, but what, okay, that's what's happening there. Yeah. What, what do you think those of us who are, want to think that we're part of the solution in terms of, I don't, mean, don't want to make public television sound right. like we're the panacea, but for those of us who aren't doing sound bites but rather full right. discussion, what can we do? You know, I, I think it's, it's just, it's continued, continue to share facts mm -hmm. and, and tell people they don't need to rush or panic. You know, really take the time. We spend more time figuring out what television we're going to buy versus <laughs> what health insurance plan. You know, there's 50 sites you can go on yeah. to figure out what car to buy and what price is right. And um, which one's more important in our lives. Yeah, and I mean, it, you can't get your health back. Yeah. Joe Barardo is the uh, President and Chief Executive Officer of MagnaCare, and we appreciate you being with us. And uh, given the complexity of this most important topic, I'm sure it won't be the last time you join us. Thanks, Joe. My pleasure. Thanks appreciate for having it. me. This you. is one-on-one. -on -one. Important stuff here. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Caldwell College, the Fidelco Group, Fedway Associates, New Jersey Sharing Network, 
Kessler Foundation, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.